Welcome to today's part of this SPSS methodology, this time with a unit on univariate statistics. Well, independent of which type of univariate statistics you want to calculate, be it measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion or distribution, SPSS has the big advantage that it provides you with one central menu one central command which basically covers all of your needs. You can find this, as with all the other methods, under Analyze. Then we have Descriptive Statistics. And here you have different possibilities. Descriptives already gives you a good overview, but not necessarily everything you might desire. A different possibility is the Explore but we go into this in a different part of this methodology. Here we will take a look at the Frequencies command. Frequencies, let's select here for example our body mass, starts with this option selected, so meaning he will generate a frequency table. We can, however, add to this if we click here on statistics and here we see we already have like the typical measures of central tendency we can select the mode the median and the mean if you're not interested in only having the mean you can here select to have your quartiles as well and well here if you're interested select different percentiles as well then the next one would be measures of dispersion. You have like the standard deviation, the variance. We also have the range. We do not have the interquartile range, but well, we get up here our quartiles, so it's relatively easy to get from the quartiles to the interquartile range. So this then covers as well our measures of dispersion. And here we have with the skewness and the kurtosis our measures of distribution as well. So we see this easy menu covers already all the standard univariate statistics. So let's click on continue and then we have one additional benefit from this menu. We can click on charts and here we can see we also can generate some kind of bar charts, pie charts or more importantly histograms histograms with an added normal curve to directly get like a graphical idea whether our data actually is normally distributed. Here in this case we cannot perform some kind of test. This can be done for example with the exploratory data analysis. Here however this provides us a first good idea of our data set. So let's also click here continue, OK. Then we switch to the output window the first part here, that's all the statistics we selected. So we see we have the mean, the median, all somewhere around 21 point something, a mode which in this case as we have metric data doesn't tell us so much of 19.84, standard deviation variance with our skewness and ketosis and down here our range and our percentiles. So if we're interested in the interquartile range, we would just go here, take this value, take that value, this minus that value. So something around, well, let's say 3.5, that would be our interquartile range as compared to the range of 20.4. So more or less the range is 17 units larger than the interquartile range. So we have some extreme outliers, but all the rest, the medium, 50%, they are more or less relatively close to each other. Then we see here our frequency table. And well, we have 284 observations. However, almost every observation is unique. There are only very few exceptions where we have a small single digit frequency. So this tells us that frequency tables are only usable or sensible if we actually have nominal ordinal data with very few categories. So for metric data 
better avoid frequency tables. And well, then the final part, that's down here, our histogram. We see the distribution, we see there are more smaller than larger values. We would see this as well if we take a look back on the top here at our skewness. This skewness tells us we have a rightward skewed variable, which in the end means more smaller than larger values. So we see this doesn't perfectly fit this normal distribution due to those outliers and due to us having more smaller than larger values. So this already helps quite a lot with getting a first impression, a first idea of our data set. Well, this then already concludes the session. I hope you enjoyed and took something from it for you. And if you're interested in seeing more of this, feel free to visit as well the other parts of the SSPSS methodology. Until then, see you and goodbye.